I am Alex Sander from Bot City, and in this video, I will show you how to integrate your bots with the Bot City Master platform, where you will find powerful tools that will aid you in controlling and monitoring your bot's execution. This video was written and voiced by Alex Sander Silva and reviewed by Ugo Slapka. Before we proceed, make sure you are registered to the Bot City Master platform and that you are able to run a bot using the runner on your host machine. Also, remember that you will need the runner on your host machine and also the bot CLI on your own computer. If you do not have the bot CLI or the runner, or if you do not know how to run a bot, check out the links in the description below. Now, this video was based on Ogo Slapka's in-depth tutorial. It's an excellent tutorial with many details that you definitely need to check out. You can also find the link for this tutorial in the description below. This tutorial has 11 steps. In step 1, we'll take a look at the task queue page in the Bot City Master platform, where we'll discuss the advantages of integrating your bot to the platform. In step 2, we'll take a look at what packages we need to start integrating our bot to the platform and install them. In step 3, we'll go back to our bot's source code and learn how to connect our automation to the Bot City Master Orchestrator. In step 4, we will learn how to properly notify the orchestrator when a task is finished, with or without failure. In step 5, we will learn how to create a log, where you can keep useful information about the bot's execution and make it easier for the user to access them. In step 6, we will learn how to fill a log with information. In step 7, we will learn how to create alerts, which are useful to notify the user whenever something of importance happens. In step 8, we'll learn how to have our bot send messages to a bot city master user or to an external email address. In step 9, we'll learn how to have our bot download and upload files to and from the platform. In step 10, we'll learn how to update our automation with the changes we have just made. In step 11, we'll run a quick test to make sure that everything's working as expected. Step 1. Open the Bot City Master platform and log in with your credentials. From the home page, you can already take a peek at the task queue, but since we want more details, we're going into the task queue page where we can see a more detailed view of our activities. We have access to filters, just like the filter I have just used. Uh, we can filter by status, we can filter by the activity we want to show. Also, if you take a look at the color at the bottom of the task, you will be able to see its current status. If it's green, then it's still running. If it's blue, then it has not yet been started by the runner. If it's gray, then it's already finished. If it is orange, however, it means that it has already finished, but it didn't do everything that it had to do. It was a partial completion. If it's red, however, it means the bot has failed for some reason, probably an uncalled on a hundred exception or something like that, or maybe a no mistake that caused the bot to stop its execution. In any case, you can see that this task is still running, but as you know, it was executed more than one week ago. Why is it still running? Well, it's the bot developer's responsibility to inform the bot city master platform of the bot's execution and finish status. This allows for better control and also to add details about the bot about the task completion that can later be inspected by the users in the Bot City Master platform. Step 2. In this tutorial, we will be adding lines of code to a bot that requires the Bot City Master SDK package. Keep in mind that if you have downloaded our bot template, you do not need to install the Bot Master SDK package because it already comes listed in your requirements.txt file, so it will be automatically downloaded and used. But if you do need to install it, you would do it like this Python minus M by Bot City Master SDK. Don't forget the install. As you can see, the requirements have already been satisfied on my computer because it was listed on my requirements.txt file, which means it was automatically downloaded by the first bot itself. Step 3. Open your source code using whatever IDE you prefer. In this case, I will be using PyCharm. The first thing you would have to do is to add an import to it, and that import is 
bot city dot maestro where you will be importing the bot maestro SDK. Then you need to connect to the bot city maestro platform and there is a way to do it which is like this. You create a new bot maestro SDK object and then you log in to this object using the login method. As a parameter you would have to send the your server, your user and your key. Uh, you could do it like this but there is a more convenient way to do it which is simply using the self.maestro which works because we are running this bot through the runner so it already has a connection to the bot maestro. We just need to reuse it. Step 4 in order to have your future tasks marked as finished in task queue, you have to add the finished task comment at the end of your bot execution. This comment receives three parameters. The first one is the task ID of the task you are currently running. One way to obtain this value is to go to the bot city master platform and manually check what is the ID of the task you are running. But another more convenient way is to just use the execution dot task ID variable that you have at hand. Now the second parameter is actually an enum that you can get from automation task finish status dot and then you can use either success, failed or partially completed. In this case we will use success. Finally you can leave a message to describe what kind of finish you had. In this case I'm just gonna say task finished successfully. Whoops, looks like I forgot one letter. There we go. Also, it's a good idea to fail our task if we do not find the fill in lucky button, for example. In this case, we cannot proceed, so we could send a message of saying that we couldn't find the fill in lucky button and mark our task as failed. Also, we should return so it won't continue the bot execution. There is another strategy that I like to use as well, which is to add a try catch all at the end of the execution to make sure that if any exception happens then and the bot does not have a treatment to it, it should mark this task as a failure in the platform. There we go. This way, if any exception happens that was not treated by our bot during its execution, then it will finish the bot with failure in the platform. And then it will pass the exception to the other levels. Step 5. Knowing that a task was finished successfully or not is often not enough when monitoring an automation. There is some precious information collected during the process that may be useful to the user. Fortunately, it's possible to send it to the bot city maestro platform by creating a log and filling it with log entries. To create a log, provide the activity label of the activity we are creating a log for and a list of columns that will hold our information. We can do it like this. We'll start by creating a list of columns. This list of columns has two columns. The first one is just a date for us to know when the information was taken. The second one is a column stating the number of subscribers the channel currently has. We will extract that information later. For now, let's focus on the log itself. Also, we need to create a new log and to initialize it, we do it like this. Like I had said, to create a new log we need a activity label and a list of columns. We can obtain the activity label from the current maestro execution by using the get task method and passing our task ID to it. We can get the activity label from the maestro object by using its get task 
method, which receives the task ID as a parameter. Step 6. Now that our log has been created, we want to fill it with some information. As an example, we will collect the number of subscribers that Bot City's YouTube channel has. To do that, open the Bot Studio and use it to capture a print screen from Bot City's YouTube channel. From this page, we want to capture the number of subscribers. To do that, I will use the subscribers word as an anchor and then I will perform a click relative trying to reach the number to the left of the subscribers. There we go. Now, if we save our file and go back to PyCharm, we will see our new code right here. But what we need here is not a simple click relative, it's actually a double click relative. which receives the same parameters. Now, this is what our bot will do. It will find the subscribers and we will do a double click in here. Then we can collect the value using the get clipboard function and store it on a new variable. And let's not forget to actually copy the number with Ctrl C before we get it with the get clipboard function. Now, to add this information to our log, we need to run the self.maestro.newLogEntry method, which receives a activity label, which we already have, an array containing the information of each line, and also a dictionary containing the information of each column. Let's build this dictionary like this. The first column is a timestamp. The second line is the number of subscribers. We need to import this date time. There we go. Now let's just add some comments. And don't forget the Ctrl C before using the get clipboard method. Step 7. Alerts. Alerts can be used to display messages in the Bot City Master Platform that may be classified as info, warnings, or errors. For example, we could set an alert to go off if Bot City's YouTube channel reaches a certain number of subscribers. To create a new alert, Use the self.maestro.alert method, which receives a task ID, which we're going to get from the execution, and it requires a title, which will be displayed in the bot city maestro. Also, we need a message, which will also be displayed in the bot city master platform. Finally, you need to define an alert type. Your options are info, error, or warn. In this case, we're simply going to use the info alert. There we go. And of course, this alert should only go off if the number of subscribers is bigger or equal to 100. I choose 100 to make sure that the alert will be triggered so we can see it in the Bot City Master Platform later on. Also, let's make it a little bit more compact. Done. Step 8. It's also possible to have your bot send a message to a list of users of the Bot City Master Platform or to a list of external email addresses. The message body can be written either text or HTML format. But either way, sending a message is very, very simple. Simply use the maestro.message method and pass 
a list of emails you want to send a message to, a list of users you want to send the message to, then a subject, the message body, and the message type parameter. The email list and the user list are optional, so you can send an empty list instead. In this case, we don't really want to send a message to any Bot City Master users, so we're going to send an empty list instead. And in case of the email list, I'm just going to use my own email and no other email. It will be the only email in this list, but that is enough for this example. Now let's just move this message to beginning of our bot execution since that's what the message is about. There we go. It will send an email to my own account as soon as it starts the bot execution. Step 9. It's possible for your bot to both download and upload files to and from the bot city master. Uploading a file is really simple and it only requires a single line of code. Use the maestro post artifact method and pass the task ID, the artifact name and the file path to it. Again, we're taking the task ID from the execution object. You may choose whatever artifact name you want for your file. In case of the file path, I'm just going to upload a file named subscribers.txt, which of course we need to create. Let's add some comments to our code, and that's it, it's really that simple. Before we proceed, there are some things I would like to change in the code. The first one is that I have changed the location of my email. I have sent this variable to the config.py file that I have just created, so I'm just going to change this import right here. And the second thing is when we create a new log, because there is a chance that this log already exists and in this case we need to add a try catch or rather a try accept because if the log already exists it's going to throw a exception which we can safely ignore in this case I will also change some of the comments I will also delete these spaces because we usually do not leave them in Python. And I will rename this function because this naming convention actually comes from Java. And it's an alias that works. You can use this function like this. But the real name of this function, Python, is like this, it's with the underscores and no capital letters. After taking a closer look at the code, I found four more things that we need to change before we can proceed. First one is that I need to add a dot right here before the config because the config file is in the same package as our bot.py file, which is why it has received a dot right there. The second mistake was that I was treating the activity ID as if it was the activity label. This is not correct. You cannot currently obtain the activity label from the task. So instead, 
we're just going to pass the activity label in a hard-coded mode. In other words, this is first what test. The third thing is that when we get the number of subscribers using the get clipboard function, we're actually going to receive a string. So we need to convert this to an int, and it's quite easy to do that in Python. We just have to add this int method, and that's it. The last thing we need to change is pretty simple. I was using pass right here, but pass is a no operation in Python. In other words, this is not doing anything. What I actually wanted to achieve right here is something that I can achieve with raise. The reason I want to raise it is because if I don't, then this exception will be lost. And an exception contains useful information about what has happened, where a problem happened. And because of that, since it's an unknown, unhandled exception, I do want it to keep existing and eventually crash my bot so I will have a log of what's happening. If I was just passing it, then the information would have been lost as well. Oh, and we need to replace this activity label with its hard-coded version right here as well. Now we're finally ready to run this bot and see our results. Step 10. Now that our bot has gone through some modifications, we have to release those modifications in a new updated bot version. To do that, first you have to build your bot again. And you can do that using bot.thebuild.bat file provided in your first bot folder. As you can see, it's a better idea to run it in the PowerShell so you can have a log of what's going on. Yeah, everything's fine. Step 10 part 2. After rebuilding our package, we will send the new version to the Bot City Master platform using the bot CLI. We can do that using the bot update comment. The bot update comment receives three parameters. The first one is the bot ID of the robot we're trying to update. In this case, it will be the first bot. Also, we need to send the version, and in this case, we will just override version 1.0. Finally, we need to send a path to the file containing the package of the new version of the bot. This package, in our case, is contained in the dist folder. There we go. Oh, we must append the Python comments at the end so it knows that it's a Python robot. There we go. Update successfully. Step 11. After making sure your host machine is ready to receive a new bot execution, let's create a new task for the runner using the bot CLI. To do that, simply use the task create command in the bot CLI and pass the activity label as a parameter. Our activity label for this activity is first bot test. And then we just hit enter and the task was created successfully. Now let's follow our bot's execution and see if it's working as expected. It's downloading the package. There we go. It has just collected the number of subscribers from Bot City's YouTube channel. Now let's see if that information is available to us in the master platform. Now go to the master platform and take a look at the home page. You will see one executed tasks and you will see that in the task queue there is one task that is still running. Of course we already know uh, that this was our first bot execution which was before our integration with the master so it does not know that this bot has actually already finished. This executed tasks data however is stating that one bot has been finished successfully and this is kind of a spoiler of what we're gonna see once we hit the task queue but anyway there is another spoiler right here which is the result file or subscribers.txt file was uploaded successfully anyway if we hit to the result files page we can download the subscribers.txt file and we can see that it is stating the right number of subscribers 174 at this moment. If we go to the execution log and select our activity, we will see that there is a log 
for our bot right here. It states the date when the information was taken and the number of subscribers at that point in time, which is 174. Fantastic. You could also download it in CSV format. And if we take a look at the task queue, as I said, we're going to see one task that is still running. That was a task created before integrating our automation with the Maestro. And then there is this task right here, which is finished, uh, thanks to the modifications we did to integrate our bot to the Maestro platform. When we go to alerts, we can see one alert right here stating that Bot City's YouTube channel has reached 100 subscribers. Very well. And that is the end of this tutorial.